14th at 9 a.m. Welcome to Commissioner Support. We're going to go ahead and get started. Commissioner Yower. Here. Commissioner Rosales. Here. Judge Shaw here. Commissioner Schindel. Here. Commissioner Hamill. Here. Carol Smoothie with the County Clerk's Office. Here. Please stand and join us in opening prayer and stay standing for the pledge. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our blessings. Thank you for the recent rain received. We thank you for the troops that help preserve our freedom in this world. We ask that you be with us today as we make decisions for, for Corns County. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Is this in terms of distance? I don't know. I mean, they're all on. They're all on. This one's dead here, Bob. Look at That's intentional. Thank you. Helping me out there, actually. I don't know who this is. Now that should be it. Should be it. <coughs> Citizens, be heard even. Yes. Mr. Shakami. I'm sorry that I talked a little louder. I don't want to scar y'all. Nice table, though. Good morning. How y'all done? Good morning. Good morning. Good, good. Uh, I'll try to make this as quick as possible. And hopefully as pain, painless as possible. And that number nine that y'all got on here about uh, appointing that jail committee. Uh, I see Mr. Yar and Barber are on there with the sheriff. I understand y'all been to quite a few of the jailhouse meetings and all that with the, with the uh, people up in Austin. But uh, I was wondering if maybe the uh, two police chiefs from Corn City and Kennedy might be able to have some input into this or, or help out with this. And Mr. Yar's got quite a bit on his plate as it is. And uh, Judge, you seem to be fairly busy yourself with the stuff you're doing. I just was wondering if that would be a possibility. Uh, and I was wondering if the public's going to be kept up to speed on this as opposed to how it was done in the previous administration. We're going to see a rendition of it, either drawing or computerized picture or something like that. Do you think maybe that could be get be put in the paper once it gets to that point? Mm -hmm. yeah. You'll see all that, Tommy. Be well, able I to hope I'm not the too. only one that sees You'll it. You'll see it. I appreciate it. Okay. Number 10, the reference to the... Uh, uh, the other locations is needed, determined by the sheriff. Well, I'm not asking for any favors, but I sure would like some signs put up on uh, the county road that I live on. That hill up there, uh, I was, wasn't around. I don't think any of y'all were around back many years ago, but Mrs. Sipple's father got killed on top of that hill going to check his mail uh, a long time ago on County Road 182 at the very top of that two-story white house. There's also, El Oso has a water uh, distribution center right there where people come and get water from it. And if you're coming heading north on 182 and they're moving faster than that 35 mile an hour speed limit sign, they top that hill and somebody's gonna be beside that water dispersal place heading south, where are they gonna go if there's not any uh, signage or uh, yellow blinking lights too far fetched probably for somebody to put out there, but you know some more signs and Mr. Uh, Beatrix said he could drop that speed limit sign to 25 one time when I talked to him. I, that wouldn't hurt my feelings any. But uh, I'd sure like to see something like that done. Some warning signs or, or something. And a uh, traffic counter. I noticed the state or somebody was putting them out on the highways yesterday. Is there any way the county can get some traffic counters and uh, put them across some of these busy roads, these county roads, to see exactly what kind of traffic's going on? That sure would, that sure help along with uh, trying to figure out which roads need to be dealt with, possibly. Mr. Shockman, your time's up. <laughs> that was good, okay. <laughs> oh, 
One more thing. The highway had one of these, and uh, your husband's trucking company ran over the one with the bolt. There's this kind of debris out there on the dirt roads and on the pavement. So, just thought I'd mention it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Warren Simmons. What was your first name, sir? I'm sorry, Lauren. Warren. Warren. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm planning on moving out to out there near Fall City, and on County Road 243, there's a, a ditch going across that's only about 12 foot wide, and I was looking to get that widened. It's like a little, little culvert so I can move a trailer on and back that property. That's pretty much it. You, you know what, Mr. Simmons, I think you're gonna have to do with Jeff with Road and Bridge or something. Okay. To discuss this, or if it's, if it's on a county property or something. It's like county that. road. Yeah, I think that's what you're gonna need to do. And I, I'm not trying to turn you away or anything. That's fine. I don't think that would be a decision or agenda item up here that we would, I just wanna put you in the right direction. Okay, okay. and it's who, Jeff with? Jeff, right with Jeff, turn around right there. Oh, okay, okay. 583773. <laughs> 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 Pavement, and the first the first county road that comes up to the left, take it and go down all the way to the dead end, and that's where his property is out there on the dead end. Okay, I'm lost. Okay, thanks, Mr. Simmons. Thank You'll get with Jeff. That would help you. Okay. Mr. Yarder. Good morning. Let's speak to two or three items on the agenda. Item 13. Item 13 as written in the agenda does not meet the requirements for an emergency amendment to the budget. I don't know what the budget is for the special project office. However, I would recommend that in, as in most other counties, that the county clerk, if she doesn't have the funds, be maybe the funds could be transferred to uh, hire a part-time clerk to issue permits for road and bridge specifically and other duties as assigned in the clerk's office, county clerk's office. I know if you go to other counties, permits are always, you always have to go to the county clerk's office, not the road and bridge or anyplace else. Items 15 and 17. I'm gonna address Mr. Fisher's request first for an engineer to remove and backfill the basement at the courthouse. <coughs> Personally, I see no problem with him hiring somebody as long as he wants to pay for it. I think Mr. Fisher and Mr. Boyle need to be put on notice that Nickel and Diamond County is just not going to be to their benefit. I know Mr. Boyle had an opportunity to amend or, or to re-bid the contract on the courthouse, and he elected not to do that. Moving on to his requirement that he wants now to submit a bid in, in an amount of $21,769, not a bid, but a cost overrun for subcontractors. That was originally turned down on the 10th of January. At that time, he was asked if he was asking $25,153.88. Begin to wonder if Mr. Fisher really knows exactly how much he wants, or if he's just guessing in the dark, which sounds like to me. In addition, he is not asking for anything specific. He just wants $21,000. And I, don't, I would recommend that the Commissioner's Court stick with the original ruling and deny that request. Mr. Boyle had an opportunity to uh, rebid the contract and declined to do so. I think that a clear message should be sent to Mr. Boyle that when they feel like they, he can't pay it under the old contract, it's just too bad. He's just going to have to settle <coughs> the consequences. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Yard. Fine alone. Uh, good morning. I asked Judge Shaw if it would be better if I did a public comment or if I actually commented on the item on getting Sharon some help. I just want to say that my office sees a lot of the traffic that she has in her office as special projects, and I would really think it would be a good idea to get her the help that she needs 
Uh, she asked for that help at the beginning of the year for the budget, and y'all kind of laughed at her and told her she didn't need any help. Uh, she's very far behind. She does the best that she can. Um, I think it's a very important to have 911 addresses and to kind of touch on Mr. Yarder's comment a little bit, the uh, special projects does not do the permitting, the road and bridge does that. Uh, Carol's office has enough to do with land men to have to deal with permits and I think it needs to stay where she's at, but I'm very much in support of getting Sharon the help that she needs and my office will share space if we have to, uh, give her a chair or a desk if we have to, but we'll help in whatever we can to help her. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're just going to be, we're going to move through a couple of items really quickly. I'm going to get Luana uh, finished so we can move her on. I don't mean that ugly Luana, I meant just so we can get you done here. <laughs> that <laughs> isn't my request. <laughs> Number 11. I want to move over there because uh, Luana's going to be involved in this one. Discuss approved, disapproved installation of emergency generator service equipment at the price of $5,069. The funds will come from the previously budgeted annex funds, which will not require a budget amendment. You look like you're moving better. I'm moving better, but still not up to par. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Pete, had talked to, huh? Pete had talked to me about this as far as what monies are in the budget currently for completion of the annex. And we do have adequate funds to install this generator. Well, we have to have it, though, mm -hmm. just for continuity of government. Right. We just won't have to do any type of amendment or anything else. Well, I make a motion that we approve the installation of the emergency generator service equipment at the price of $5,069. The funds will come from previously budgeted annex funds and will not require a budget amendment. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No opposition? 5-0. Five, five motion carries. Just, just for a little bit more information on it, Dwayne Dubois got a grant of some equipment, and he has some equipment that will fit. He specifically checked we're building, and that will fit for an emergency generator system. Uh, it needs to be installed in there, and this is a cost to install it. But the, some equipment was uh, obtained by a grant from Kennedy Police Chief Dwayne Dubois. In the amount of $28,243, we have purchased the equipment and we received the grant reimbursement yesterday. Good. Thanks, Lauren. Pete, Pete, where are they installing it? It would be on the concrete slab where the, where the uh, electrical uh, transformers are oh, and new, behind the, the new annex, annex building. Is this and what this will be for, if, uh, if we have a power outage, we will not, we're not buying a generator, $100,000 generator, 75, whatever it costs. We will be able to rent a generator and hook it up. In other words, we can rent one for three or $400 a day and have it there in, in five or six hours instead of putting $100,000 in the Oh, we're not, this is not for the generator. This is not for a generator, it is for equipment to, to have a diesel-fired generator to plug in. All right, number 12, discuss, approve, disapprove, request to purchase two tractor trucks and a pickup truck for the Carnes County Road and Bridge Department. I would like to use collected Carnes County Road permit funds to make such purchases. That's Jeff. Um, we've been having quite a bit of trouble with uh, the tractors that uh, I have right now. I've got one back in the shop again. Uh, we're getting the front end rebuilt on it. I would like to try to use up these two trucks, uh, put one on a water tank and keep one on the haul trailer. Uh, for hauling equipment around, and uh, uh, we desperately need to start thinking about getting a fleet of trucks coming in. See if we can get some of this cost coming down on the on the renting trucks, leasing trucks for hauling this material out. Because uh, down the line, even when we do get all our roads repaired, that's the way I'm working right now. If we do get ever get that way to repair the roads, we're still going to need trucks to take care of our own roads and stuff, and uh, to have them going there. Pickups, uh, we're we're hurting for pickups at the yard. Bad, we got uh, it's pretty bad. And you got to work on trucks in the morning so you can go out and uh, work on uh, equipment uh, so we can go out on the roads and stuff. Uh, that's kind of what we're asking for, and I'd sure like to see that happen. Luana, you just gave us a little highlight. What does that mean? That's okay. how much money you can spend? Or? No, what Jeff had requested that this come out of the permit funds. Uh huh. To date, in fiscal year 12, we've collected 151,757.24 in permit funds. Mm -hmm. 
of that in our regular budget, we've budgeted 100,000 to meet normal expenditures. So to date, we only have 51,000 plus remaining in funds that have been collected that could be used towards the purchase of the tractors and or the pickup. If the tractors are over $50,000, we have to go out on bids on them. We can't just go to, unless they are purchased through a no, governmental co-op. They'll be purchased through a governmental co-op, yeah, okay. definitely. Well, depending on what the prices are, I don't think $51,000 no. to date is going to cover all three of those items. No. So we would have to do, <coughs> consider emergencies, do a budget amendment to purchase anything over and above what we have available right now if this is approved to do this. Can, can you see what you can get, Jeff? And you can, I guess you can, can you start with this $51,000 and you can order one item and then we can look at amending on other, the other two? Because mm -hmm. that would at least give him something to start with. Does that make sense, right. Jeff, what I said? Yeah. Because I know what I'm thinking, but I don't know if I... Right. Uh, we're going to have to start on upgrading and the deal because this, this old equipment pushing it all over the, the county the way we started pushing this equipment. It's, it's taking a toll on this equipment and we're beginning to spend a lot of money on this equipment. We're going to have to start and, and go forward on replacing the equipment for this county because we're going to have to continue working. And, uh, and down the line it's going to be, uh, you'll be hearing me later on talking about employees too. So How much is a traffic truck, Jeff? You're, you're looking at right at 100 or better. You might want to start with a picket. Well, is this money <coughs> budgeted for that? Well, this is what I'm fixing to continue with. To be able to spend this money, there has to be an action item by me to the court to certify that these additional revenues are there. And then the court will have to set a special budget for those additional revenues before expenditures can actually be done. So this money is not targeted for that then? This money is just additional revenues we've received so far this year, and it's not well, that. Those money is targeted and has been used, correct? Or is in the process, will be used, yes. But it was what you did. The 100,000, yes. So what do we do with There has to be an action item on the next meeting for me to certify the additional revenues. After I certify the additional revenues, then the court has to adopt a special budget to spend those additional revenues. In other words, we can't take action on this today. Okay, you could probably it'd be better to no action it, but you could technically take action to authorize him to purchase a pickup because we have the money, it's just not allocated for it yet. Right. I'd rather see it by a truck that can pull one of that wagons and haul material out there than yeah. pick up first. I, I agree with John. Because that's we have spent over $50,000 in repairs on that old white stuff, but we need new stuff. Why give it all the way to the repair company? Yeah. So are you looking at brand new or are you looking at used? I'd like to get new because I'm better off with new. Yeah. Because right now, with all everybody, you know, all the good used trucks are gone. Every trucking company in the world got them picked up. We'd have to go with the new vehicle. Well, you look at the because it's going to be cheaper in the long run if you go with the well, old Well, you got warranty. Warrant, you got warranty. You know what else. you got in the new truck. You keep maintenance records on the new truck. You don't know what you're buying, and then you have to spend more money for repairing the used truck. That's well, my opinion. Everybody else think that. What is the price for that one? one. So we need to have an action item on the next meeting and then we need to adopt a special budget for the monies that are certified as additional revenues. Now, as of right now, we're only at 51, almost $52,000. If the priority is a tractor truck, then we don't have enough money to be able to purchase that even with the additional revenues right now. <coughs> Unless between today and the end of the month, we collect fifty more thousand dollars plus. I've collected since January one to now eighty-five thousand five hundred forty-seven dollars. Okay, well Januarys are included in this figure, I guess. So whatever's been since well, this March, it was a big one came in, so sixty thousand in one box. So that is part of a truck. Well, anyway, we're working on it. We're gonna it. Maybe we can't buy one at a time. You know? Well, that, that would be a start. Where I can, start. 
and I, I need that. And the one truck that I got in the shop right now is I want to ease it up. We're going to put it on a water tanker where I can water these roads that the oil companies are helping me work on and stuff. Because I definitely need it. Need another truck. We just we just can't run with a handful of trucks. I'm still confused as to how you're going to pay for this. It needs to go into the budget. This is not. What I talked about is that the next agenda I will certify the additional revenues. But that and hasn't been tagged for that yet. Then after I certify we've got the additional monies, the court will adopt a special budget for those funds. Like we did when we had equipment auctions, etc., to be able to spend them, we have to adopt a special budget. I got a question. What happened to the bond situation that we, all the voters voted on for the road? The money for that? Where is that? Are we started with that yet? Th that's not on here, Tommy. I, I don't. But I mean, we did ask Jeff the other day for a plan, and so we okay. can give him that money. And. That's that's I haven't heard it up about that. I just was curious. Maybe no, no. That would help. When, we get, when we get to the road in Bridge Park, we asked you for the plan so we could start allocating you that money. That's but that's the that's that's not materials. materials. That's, that's materials. That's, that's materials. Not that's materials not a lot on the road but we will, once wanna, Jeff gets us that plan of where he needs to go, we'll start seeing how we can start allocating him money. Yeah, that's money that I don't want to use on the equipment. I want to, I want to take it to the for material. Material and hauling it. Let's stay where we're at and we'll. We'll do what Luana said. Luana, you'll send me those items. Yes. I, I write all these notes. I write these great notes. <laughs> no action on this item. No action. Okay. Wait, Luana, you're not done. Oh, I just have specific questions. According to Judge, am I to understand you said a second ago that you talked to Jeffrey already about starting the process for the bond? Is that what you said? When we get to the road and bridge part, I can talk to you about that. Oh, okay. I just was curious. Thank you. You're welcome. Where'd you go? Okay. <laughs> Discuss, approve, disapprove an emergency budget amendment to special projects department to hire a part-time employee to permitting, and that's crazy. Well, we need some, she needs some desperate help. She's kind of running behind, and we need to get caught up to date. And I think that she needs some part-time help, and then I leave it up to her to who, who she wants to hire and how long she wants to work for. And I, I'll just turn that over to her. Hey, about 120 days behind on 911 and stuff like that. And, uh, if, if they keep coming in the way they are, she'll never catch up. So she needs some help to get all this filed and I'll make a motion to what? Wait, 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 oh. wait. We have to know how many hours, what the rate of pay is, etc., before we Why can amend the budget. Why is that emergency? Well, that's at the discretion of the court. But for my purposes, up I need to, to know. Point, yes hours and rate of pay well i don't i don't know hopefully it's considered an emergency but i don't know if it is but and i know that why i'm sorry but i never uh, i never laughed about when she asked for help or anything just to clarify that to the public but i did i believe i did make a mistake at the time when i go everybody makes a mistake that i we didn't give her help because i've been in there now a few times and i apologize i wasn't in there before mm -hmm. but the times that i've been in here now she's old i'm not She's doing the job and she's great at the job, but it's overwhelming. I wouldn't be able to do that job just by myself. There's no way. She does need help. So yeah, I, I, I. But I, because I think that there was, there was, even when was people telling us the growth, the growth, the growth, a lot of it has been unexpected. I mean, there's stuff that we didn't foresee. People can say we foresaw it, but we didn't foresee it. Well, this goes, to me, it goes hand in hand with the Sheriff's Department and the six deputies. Because these calls are going up, they got to have addresses. They got to know where they're going. They're Especially if something happens. Can I uh, make one comment? No. <laughs> but um, I'm sorry because we're going to stick with the agenda. Oh, um, that's the comment I wanted to make on the uh, 911. Go ahead, Ms. Sparks. Uh, I called the deputy out to my house and, and he went the wrong direction because it showed me the GPS. But, so, what does a 911 address do for you? Well, but that goodness, it wasn't an but, but we we still, as emergency management coordination, when we enter the state, we have to have those 911 addresses. Yes, because but if it, it doesn't work, but that's person. something. We're, and if it didn't work, that's something you need to make us aware of so we can make it work. Right. I think she was saying the GPS didn't work. Right. And oftentimes yeah. it does. Doesn't. I, I can G tell you. And, and GPS, GPS, GPS is a computer. A lot of times, uh, <laughs> that's in San Antonio, all over the place. But I'm I'm kind of agreement with uh, uh, Carl and James. I mean, I think it's she needs she needs help. She needs addressing, and what is part-time in pay? Ten dollars an hour? Nine. 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 And she can have up to thirty nine hours a week. Thirty. Thirty. It's just a. 
we need to make it legal. Specific. Well, and I, I think it is legal, Mr. Busselman. If she needs, if people need 911 addressing, if it's an emergency, it's an emergency. I mean, if people go without ambulance services, that would be an emergency. Just giving you a caveat. So make it an emergency. <laughs> Just saying to put that in your, in our. We need to find an emergency. That's why I was saying, you know, I don't know if it's an emergency or not, but I do know that she needs help, but I don't. Well, I think when you rely on that address for an emergency, I, I, what have yes, you, I understand. I think it's an emergency. My personal opinion, Bob. <laughs> I, I, I understand. Because <coughs> without that address, it's hard to respond to an emergency. It doesn't meet the requirements by statute for an emergency. Sheriff, would you like would you like to comment on what, that? Luana, does it meet the statute by requirements that you were looking at? Anything unforeseen? If we have nine one one, if it was addressed at a previous budget meeting that she needed additional help and it was declined by the commissioner's court, then it was recognized. Okay, <clears throat> hold on. Let's finish this up here. I think my thing is there's a lot of things that were brought up at the commissioner's court that were recognized, and people can sit there and say it's an emergency or it's not an emergency until it affects them. I think that a lot of things that we did at budget time, we did not foresee. And I think the statute specifically says unforeseen circumstances, whether or not it's something we talked about or something we didn't talk about. And I mean, I don't, I don't think we'd be doing our citizens any harm by allowing them to have 911 addresses. I agree. I think it's pretty important. I mean, public safety. And I, I've heard there's a, kind of like a waiting list. I mean, she's, she's overwhelmed. We have one well blowout, we have something happen, and somebody gets hurt, I can guarantee you it's going to be an emergency. Sure. How far are you all behind right now? I'm very far behind. 120 uh, days? Over 180 some odd still with the EOD. Every oil well from Marathon that has just taken over Hillcore that never got an address. Those are the only two companies that are submitting currently. Uh, Pioneer has just opened up their eyes that they need permitting on top of that. Every new business is permitting not just for 911 addresses, but they're permitting for development. So there's more than one job being done at the same time, but it's a lengthy process. And Sharon and I both just attended a 911 training, an emergency response training. There's a lot of things that they're expecting us to do as a county that we had no idea we were supposed to be doing. That Sharon had no idea, I had no idea. Is that not? Well, but we are doing development permits. No, I'm aware that they need a development permit. The company's not on there. Right, aware. and now they're all turning them in. Yes, they are. But, and the, but there was stuff that there was not, that people were not aware of, and when we went to that training and people became aware of it, they started pounding us. And you are required to issue a 911 address to anyone that requests one, and it should be in a timely manner because these rigs are up in, what, three months? 28 and days. 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 And I am not keeping up with it. It's ago. impossible. There we go again, that GPS coordinates, we use that a lot on their life. We're doing this, I mean, several times a week that GPS is coming in. I'm sorry about your situation there, but that's where we go again. There's people coming and going out here so fast that that GPS is a lifesaver. I'm trying to get a bunch of stuff with my dispatchers. I'm moving through dispatchers left and right. I'm trying to get the six deputies. we got to get caught up because, like you just said, where was 243? This Mr. Simmons, right? Where was 243? I mean, we've lived here a whole lot. I got deputies coming in that they don't have a clue where Corns County even was until they seen it in the newspaper. <laughs> you know, and this is what I'm doing. The GPS thing is, sure. we're there. Do not mean it. I just want to answer that one question because GPS is totally different than your 911 database. Right. Your 911 database only works when you have a landline and you call your dispatch through 911, not a cell phone to the landline phone. It has to be 911. Then it shows up on the database map. When they use GPS, that is something that man made, designed out in the world, don't know who designed it, but they do not coordinate with our roads because they didn't come to our county and see even if those roads were were current and they're not. And, and what's back? And, and what's back? Okay, right let's, now. Move back let's move back to the amendment okay. for where we were with special projects. Let's get back there. Yes. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve a emergency budget amendment to the special projects appointment to hire a part-time employee to assist with permitting 
And what else do I need to add to that? The number of hours per week and the rate of pay. Uh, 39 hours per week at $9 per hour. Is that correct, Lauren? Yes. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5 0, no opposition. Lauren, we need to pay bills. That's in your You guys have got bills in your package. I'm not being mean to her. Yeah. Well, yeah, ladies, you skip seven, On purpose, lost. because we have to do Moana. Oh, okay. We're getting Moana. Not, only is, <laughs> not only is it Valentine's Day, but it should be nice to Moana Day. Really <laughs> yeah, what? I'm not <laughs> they're, they're kind of, they'll probably be here at about noon. Flowers. Uh, really? I'll be gone. You might say Clem on there, but they're coming. <laughs> You'll notice the first entry on the bills is a payment to MJ Boyle. It is his application number 11 that the county previously hadn't received that Fisher resubmitted after we issued payment for 12 and he wondered where number 11 was. So that is why we have two back-to-back -back payments. We had one on the 10th and then for the 31st and then one today. that have been spent on road materials as well as the freight to haul those materials. Total road and bridge expenditures this cycle is $157,975.36. for the month of January. I have verified these with the treasurer's report and we are on the same wavelength there. The next page is the debt requirements as of January 31st. We have made the payments that were due February 15th. Those have been submitted, which pays off the prison site, the Connolly unit. And as another- So it's gone? It's That's gone. our last payment? Yay. I got the flight. Thank remember. you. <laughs> we now have a It's been a month, And then also we've made a payment on February 15th, or that's due on February 15th, uh, for the new annex building. Then the last page is an item of interest. I've shown you the total county funds available as of January 31st, 2012 at 8999659 we had total funds invested as of January 31st of 9,108,667.57, which we have a 
temporary OD in our active cash account as of January 31st of $109,008.43. But the receipts from taxes as of January 31st that were probably deposited on the 3rd or 4th are did cover that, and we have surplus monies in our cash accounts right now. spend the, the brunt of the money 
and then let the counties try to take care of them. But they'll have to build them to, to our specs, and uh, I do have a specs on, on that. I worked with a road contractor on that, try to have that laid out, and that's kind of going forward. Uh, working with Pioneer right now on uh, where uh, your nephew lives down there towards the ranch, uh, that road is totally tore up. Uh, that's 131, and uh, they're complaining the road's rough, and I told them, I said, well, I said, they asked me if we can repair it, and I said, well, it's not our traffic that's destroyed the road or the local farmers and the ranchers. It was their company that destroyed the road, so I'm trying to get them to come in and uh, repair that road and also chip seal that road. Uh, these roads... That's 331? Yes, sir. That's the one that goes to the Handy Ranch down there. Uh, we're going to try to get that one. I've been spending a lot of time on the phone and in the offices with these oil companies that are trying to go through. I've been talking to some... Uh, uh, County judges in the surrounding areas, what they're uh, what they're going to be doing with their deals. Uh, uh, some of the companies, uh, counties are going to go out and try to do a, a mechanical survey on their roads to see what they need to charge the oil companies for these roads. Uh, not today, but for tomorrow. To, because our tax base is not going, to, the way we're going, our tax base will never be able to handle the roads to repair the roads. So we need to come up with a plan. I'm working on a million things and I'm not, I don't know if I'm getting anywhere, but I'm trying. And, uh, and we have to get, uh, I, I talked to uh, LaSalle County, just did a mechanical survey on their roads to see what their uh, roads are gonna cost to fix after this is done. Keep patching your roads now, but when the projects are all said and done and they leave and we don't do something, what are we going to have in Corners County? No roads. Well, and Jeff, we did, Pete and I went yesterday also to Commissioner's Court in Beeville to be able to explore some of those opportunities with you. And we need to get look at some of those permitting fees and stuff again. The same thing that they're all doing. Right. Because it's not it's not just us. If y'all drove down the highway, y'all notice that some of the uh, lanes are buckling on 181 or anybody noticing with the asphalt being in. State doesn't have the budget to fix, so we're all seeking, Jeff. It's not just you. All of our neighboring counties are going through the exact same exactly. thing, and uh, that's why we went yesterday. I'd like to try to get to a couple of other counties to see what we can figure out, so we're not all <coughs> but they're all struggling with us. And uh, on the on the me mechanical uh, uh, survey, I, I did talk to a, to an engineering group. I visited with like two engineering groups that told me that they're doing this for these other counties. They they just visited with the county judge in uh, DeWitt County, and uh, I did not talk to the judge there. The gentleman, I kind of talked through the gentleman to him, through him, and uh, what they're going to do there, they're going to do the study in DeWitt County because they're impacted as hard as we are in DeWitt County. They're, they take they're, a lot of permit fees, though. And their roads, believe me, their roads look like our roads in a, in a lot of areas because uh, I drove into the county because we meet and we drive on their roads, too, and the roads are getting... And they're, 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 wherever I hear I'm getting people screaming and hollering, no roads, no roads, and it ain't over yet. Jeffers, for somebody that knows the like a uh, truck holds, is it 23 yards? You can legally haul in about 18 to 20. 18 to 20 yards. And if you, if you have a road that's 30 feet wide, how far does that one load go? You need to take, you put two trucks on a 30-foot wide road, you put them side by side, you take uh, 20 foot, of, I mean 20 yards of material, you put them side by side, you blade it out, you got six inches of material laying on the road. And you're many hanging, yards? You got six inches of material laying on that road and about the length of a belly duck. It's not in yards, it's in tons. Is that 30 tons, feet? Yeah. Is that 30 feet? Yeah. About 60 not, feet? Not quite, not quite, <laughs> not quite. <laughs> so, you know. You start dumping them trucks out there, it takes a long time to make it out of the end of that road. And if you so. get us that survey, we'll, we'll try to get that. I'm going to bring a, I'm going to bring a group in here to uh, talk. So what this, what this company will do, they'll come in and they'll do what uh, somebody mentioned, the counting of the trucks, uh, the traffic, the impact on the roads and stuff, and how it's affecting the roads and all that. There's a company, well, we'll just, I'll just talk and let I the. I sent them a lot to you, Jeff. They call yeah. here, I mean. Oh, I got them, they're coming. Like, yes. Everybody wants a job to come in and, you know, and do that. And uh, to me, that, that struck me the best because, you know, kind of talking to the other, a couple of the other judges in the counties and the commissioners, what they need to do because they know what's going to happen. When you start giving your big tax rate and you start gaining a lot of money, 
your revenue actually is going to come down like on the roads and stuff. I've been there. I know how it works. And your revenue just starts coming down on the, on the backside. You're not going to have enough money to, uh, to take care of your roads. So we need to go after the oil companies, and we're going to have to do something to help take care of these roads. So uh, I'd like to try to do this. We just need to get ahead of that curve because that money's going to last for forever. And only one. And we need to. We need some sustainability with that money. We got to jump in and do something if we don't. Orange County roads are going to be terrible, but they're so bad already. Look at getting that study for us so we can start devising a plan, though. Juan and I are trying to write. I'll bring the next <coughs> commissioner court. I'll bring the company in. I'll pay Dawson to kind of give you all an idea how it works and stuff. I listened to the gentleman. And I think this would be well. So I think this would be well plans. worth the money to do a mechanical study on these roads. Because uh, Lamont and I are trying to write a lot of this stuff, but we can't write it if we don't have the information from the people we need it. Right. From, so. and that's kind of reason I'm, I'm I'm rolling with it, but it's taking time. I understand. Time because we're starting from the ground up with all this stuff. We still need it from you, though. Oh yeah. All I right. Thank you, Thank you, Jeff. Okay. Carl, do you have anything? No. Keith. Well, on the annex, uh, I haven't gotten confirmation, but uh, Chris Michalik told me he was going to try to get the courtroom equipment, that's a judge's bench and a jury box, put in there on the, uh, during the week of the 20th of February. They have a, I think, a criminal trial coming up last week to try to get it done before then. Uh, of course, they're working on the outside concrete. Worth washing all kind of some trolls to kind of carry water and water and water and water and water and water. So, going forward on that, we, we went to a, I went to a water planning meeting with the San Antonio River Authority last Friday <coughs> and, and they talked about, do we need anything here in Corinth County talking about the annex there, the water runoff needs to be taken care of. And Chris Michelli told me that originally, there was a cistern plan and the original plans for that annex to, to collect water off the roof. So I have to get back with San Antonio River Authority to see if they would put that into any of their plans. So there's still a lot of issues there, but we're working them out one at a time. That, uh, that little patio off the break room, I noticed all the boards were gone. They, they're sealing that. That's part of the agreement that I made that Terracon and Global Water it done. It's not on the original plans. They want something extra done. Kruger's doing that to satisfy their desires. They're going to put a two-inch layer of concrete under there, plastic film, two-inch layer of concrete so water don't soak in under that deck. Oh, and then they're going to put the, then they're put the deck back on. Oh, okay. We, we, I got price. Remember, I got prices on putting the concrete deck in it. It's, well, somebody said they're going to put concrete. It was nineteen thousand. It was nineteen thousand dollars. I don't want concrete backfill put on top of all the drain pipes underneath. You know, we got to do extensive change, so we're going to put take five to take care of the problem. Thanks, Pete. James. Not, not this time. Tracy. Uh, well, uh, from January one to now. We've taken in about $85,547, and there's a lot more on my desk. I just ain't got them all filled out yet. Well, Tracy, what are you doing? Yeah. I've been going to school. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. That's all I have. You didn't walk down the hall with a paper. No, I didn't. You know, I didn't walk down the Um, Let's go to... Number 14, discussion and solutions for litter issues in Carnes County. We are restoring our courthouse to make Carnes County attractive, but we are buried under trash. We need to address the trash problem. That's Ms. Sparks. Come on up, Ms. Sparks. I don't know if you drove around, if you opened your eyes or not, but there's trash everywhere. Tons of it. I get at least three 30-gallon trash bags of trash out of my bar bin every week. Mm -hmm. And before I can even park under my carport, there's more. Uh, I'd like to see something done about it. I know it's been brought up previously, and you guys haven't moved on it. What's wrong with using some of our tax dollars to help with this situation? And if you can't give me a solution today, if you can think about it, and I'll come back at the next commissioner's court, and you can give me a solution. 
or if you guys can't deal with it, I'll just have to go higher up. You know, Ms. Sparks, there was somebody else. I got, I put an email in those packages. I've been putting lots of emails in there. I don't know if y'all read them, but people email me with their trash problems, their deputy problems, their road problems. That's all those stacks that I put in the back of them. I don't know if y'all ever make it that far. I know previously we had talked about, you know, juvenile probationers, adult probationers, and things of that be a good resource. I don't, I don't feel like the county could do it on their own. We're going to have to have some help, like whether it be from oil companies and whatnot. At a certain day and a certain time, they send so many workers, and we just hit all these roads. Yeah, but the, the way I look at it, we got six more deputies. Hopefully, it's hard to catch them. What we need to do is bust these people, picking up trash behind them, man. We're going to keep doing it. And it's not just the oil field. It's our residents also. Uh, people, every time I mention the trash issue, they want to jump on the oil field. Well, oh, yes, the oil field is putting out trash, but our residents are just as Yeah, I don't think they're dumping those big stoves in the ditches. <laughs> yeah, so I, don't think old. The, I don't think the feed sacks are from the oil field either. Yeah. It's, but it's hard to catch them, and I've been through it already, and you know, I found trash with names on pictures of them, can't do anything about it. you got to actually physically see them, and then a lot of times the citizens, the ones that do see them, I went up to them, and they, I tell them, you need to go to court and go against these other people, they won't do it. And, and you know, and you know what, Mrs. Sparks, I think one of the questions that I had for you was, um, oh, we had talked about, too, about getting with T's, we'd actually passed a resolution, and I did work on that. They just don't have anybody right now to be able to when I'd asked for inmates that were like, I guess, lower profile to be able to come out and be able to do that thing. A lot of it's a staffing issue. They don't have people just to put out with that many inmates. Right. You know, for the safety right. of the community. Everybody's short of staff. And so that whole idea went balu. What about the JPs and the people that have to pay the funds that can't afford the funds? You know, and, and you know, we always try to work with that solution. It always comes back to the fact of the county liability. I almost think you're to the I think you're right. We need to we're going to have to end up putting money, tax dollars out to have this trash picked up. Well, if we keep letting it go, it's just going to get worse and worse yes, and worse uh, and worse. One comment I wanted to make is that my part of 72 is controlled by the Goliad Highway Department. And I bag up the trash, and I call that nice man over there. And when they're in the area, they'll actually pick up the bags at the end of my driveway. And I try not to abuse that and put my household trash in there just what I get out of the bar ditch. But he's been really super. I, I got an email on the same thing that I told you I was going to share with you that I just didn't. And it says, it just says, uh, most honorable Judge Shaw, in an earlier email I mentioned the possibility of a grant from P PXP and a point of contact. Uh, I also mentioned that the prior PXP contact I had spoken to a Conoco Phillips manager. We met with him a few days ago and he talked about bringing up grants. And then he'd see, he says he's talked to me before, and I'm sure I have, but it's probably not about trash. Um, anyway, I asked again with the possibility of the Conoco Phillips establishing community relations through grants. He said it was doable. I asked him for permission to share his cell phone number with you, and he gave me a go-ahead. This is his name and cell phone. I honestly believe that something positive could come out of this. Should you be too busy to follow up, perhaps one of the commissioners could have to help out. After all, they did a really hard campaigning to get elected. Good luck as always. Thanks for all you do. Make it a great day. And so, I don't know if somebody has time to sit down and call these people or if I could get someone to sit down and call these people and see if they could help or see if they if they're interested. How the phone numbers if I could get one out and do it. I had called that one guy that you gave me his phone number I called the cell in his office he never never returned my call. You wanna try these for me? I'm getting ready to go into six days of jury trial. I you get, you give me some numbers, I'll call it again. That's emailed in your right package. Here. Highlight that phone number. So you'll think of it and get back to me next question for well, and what, what we need to do, Ms. Sparks, is start contacting some of these people, but we're going to end up having to have somebody come clean our roads. TxDOT has what? That thing that they drive through, that raker, mm -hmm. you know, and they pick up the paper. But unfortunately, on our county roads, we can't rake up those refrigerators in a lot of places. Mattresses, refrigerators, you name it. I mean, it's bags of trash. It's almost like you need a huge vacuum cleaner because mm -hmm. it's, it's just overwhelming. I mean, but if we keep letting it go, it's going to keep piling up. And I know you said <coughs> if you pick it up, it comes back. But, God, it's going to get gross out there after a while. Well, Somebody actually called and told me it stinks at their house. So much trash has been thrown in their bar dish that there's flies everywhere and it stinks. I got tired of doing it on foot a quarter of a mile <coughs> at the end of my property, so I bought me a trail wagon this year. Well, last year. So I can 
What do you think? I don't know. We're all citizens. Maybe if we uh, make a, like a citizens thing, like they make a, like a neighborhood watch or something, that everybody joins in, and somebody gets. I know it's not everybody can afford a video camera or whatever, something, but if you can videotape some of these guys, then I say we need to bust these SOBs. Once yes. we bust them, we bust them. Picking up behind them, we're catering to them. And then when we stick it to them. That's when they're gonna learn, and other people will know that we mean business. Mm -hmm. And I mean stick it to them hardcore. Yeah. Yeah. It'll what send is, a message what is the criteria? If you have it on camera and show them on camera, can you do you have to have a personal witness to give them a yes. sign or what? Well, yes, we sure. do that. If you, everybody got these iPhones and stuff, everybody's videoing yeah. everything, putting on Facebook, doing all this stuff. If you can video and maybe maybe not get the person inside the truck throwing the trash, but at least they get us a truck, at least we got somewhere to start from. And that's kind of what we're looking at right now. It's going to have to be a lot of citizens to get involved in this. I mean, even though I'm getting six more deputies are trying, it's still, it's still going to have to have, i got to need more ears and eyes out. I've got suspicious vehicles, people pulling up these houses and breaking in and all this kind of stuff. People aren't getting involved. I mean, you know, you can't put it on y'all, can't put it on me. I mean, the citizens of Corns County is going to have to stand up and video it. Cameras, cameras are everywhere. Whatever you think, deem, but when you do this, you got to remember one thing, you're a witness. You just can't pass it off to us. You're a witness. I'm going to have to get a statement from you. That's where my deputy comes in. Hey, Bob, what about those game cameras? Yo, oh, they could be used, used, but they're not as good as the one or two that will disappear. Oh, yeah. They're good for burglaries and stalking. <laughs> yeah, well, the game cameras are good, good for burglaries and stalking. Not there on the road by itself. It's not going to last. No, long. it's not going to work. Maybe we could call a special meeting and five of us sit down and talk about it. Until we come up with something, don't like we don't leave the room until we come up with a game plan. I mean, it might only take an hour or two. What do you think about that? Too? What would it cost to pick up all the trash that people? Oh, I know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Say this is together. So we can do something. Well, that's going to be cheap. That comes through my office, and uh, I have had people bring in. Uh, they pick up paper out of the they like a tax return or whatever, an envelope got uh, a name and address on it. We can't use that. And I use it, but only limited because you still got to have uh, witness to. Well, I had a situation on a county road where uh, Jeffrey remembers it quite well. We went out there and we, we found a pay stub. So the deputy called him and he said, Oh no. They said, No, the, this is your stuff. And he said, Oh, uh, 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 uh. and he came, he came and picked it up. He, did it. he said he went around the corner so fast. That it must have fallen out the back of his truck. He had to tell me. Yeah. Well, they could have. He did come pick it up. Well, it's not Thanks for your deputies there, ain't. Right? So you'll let me know when you come to a solution, or I'll check back with you. Yeah, I think we need to. Like Carl said, I think that's when we need to all get together and hammer it out. The sheriff is right. This is going to take everybody. We yeah, need help. I agree. I and you know, agree. when we get out to some of these places, there's actually dead critters in bags. There's stuff. I mean, I know. And it's it's pitiful. I found them in my garbage. If you haven't been down our county roads, get your four uh, by Several years ago, the county had community dumpsters, and people threw dead out of that stuff in the stall. That's been 20 years ago, so you don't know that. Maybe a little solution. Well, somebody must have had this cat in their freezer, but this summer I came upon an HEB sack and it had a stiff as a board dead cat in it. <laughs> now, you know that it's not going to stay that way very long but, but in the uh, summer. Ms. Sparks, before you leave, will you talk to Sylvia and leave your phone number again? And when we have that planning meeting, I'll call you or something. Okay. She's Oh. That'd be okay. like the only item on the agenda. We here. never get so lucky to have one item on the agenda. <laughs> Don't even do it. <laughs> but we can, we can work on it.
Fisher and Hatch. <clears throat> it is the monthly report. It's got January of 2012 in there. It starts dated November 18th. And um, it's really short by Lewis. I'll actually, it says, a notice to proceed was issued on November 18th, 2011. And then in the month of December, the general contract started coordination. And it shows you every day what happened on January 3rd, January 4th, up into de demolition. And I'm going to give uh, mine to Carol so we can make it, a, she can attach it to minutes if anybody wants to look at it. Uh, it also has the Texas Historic Courthouse Preservation Program site visit report included. Kind of like notes, kind of like minutes of everything that was done. Uh, the applications for payments, that's what we just did in uh, Luana still. That's those payments, so. Oh, I heard me talking. You weren't passing that. I'll uh, give this one to Carol, and she can have it. And all it is is the update of what happened on the meetings. It says who the personnel is, who the communication is, and what the schedule that it looks like for the schedule to come down. I can actually read this if anybody wants me to read it, or you can view it if you'd like to view it. Does anybody want to hear it? No? Okay. Well, I'm going to hand this to Carol, and she can follow it with her minutes just for the update if anybody wants to see it. Approved paying a second claim in the amount of $21,769.14 for delay start date of November 18, 2011. It's MJ Boyle, that's in there. He sent me a claim. This is that the change order that he sent us last time was $25,000 something. If you look, now he sent a claim for $21,769.14. Exact I, don't, same. I, I don't see why it's like where he's having 25 and then 21. There's a big change there. We got a discount. Uh huh? We got a discount. I, yeah, <laughs> I understand it, but I'm, I mean, I still stick to my guns. I'm not going to. Is that a motion? What? Is that a motion or a discussion? Well, I'm discussing. I mean, I'll let everyone else talk. I'm just kind of, you know, discussing it. But if I have to make the motion, I'll make it. But, you know, I'm sure everybody else wants to. Well, I'm, I'm still. We can discuss I'm still, it after the motion is made, too. Go ahead, go, go ahead, James. I'm then sorry. I'll make the motion to disapprove paying a second claim in the amount of $21,769.14 for a delayed start date of November 18, 2011, because they did have a chance. They had a chance to redo the contract. They chose not to. Why should we pay for it? I agree. I'll second the motion. Okay. I agree with you. I think if they were going to ask they for the money, they should have redid it. I mean, we have a contract that's in place. Let's use the contract that's in I place. I stick to my contract, so. Does anybody have anything else? To yeah, I don't think they're dumping those big stoves in the ditches. <laughs> yeah, they're <laughs> kind of old. I don't think the feed sacks are from the oil field either. Yeah, it's, but it's hard to catch them, and I've been through it already. And you know, I found trash with names on pictures of them. Can't do anything about. It. You got to actually physically see them. And then a lot of times, the citizens, the ones that do see them, I went up to them and they, I tell them, you need to go to court and go against these other people. They won't do it. And, and you know, and you know what, Mrs. Sparks, I think one of the questions that I had for you was, um, oh, we had talked about too about getting with TDs. We'd actually passed a resolution, and I did work on that. They just don't have anybody right now to be able to. When I'd asked for inmates that were like, I guess, lower profile to be able to come out and be able to do that thing, a lot of it's a staffing issue. They don't have people just to put out with that many inmates, right? You know, for the safety right. of the community. everybody's short of staff. And so that whole idea went balu. What about the JPs and the people that have to pay the funds that can't afford the funds? You know, and, and you know, we always try to work with that solution. It always comes back to the fact of the county liability. I almost think you're. To the, I think you're right. We need to. We're going to have to end up putting money, tax dollars out to have this trash picked up. 
Because well, if we keep letting it go, it's just going to get worse and worse yes, and worse uh, and worse. One comment I wanted to make is that my part of 72 is controlled by the Goliad Highway Department. And I bag up the trash, and I call that nice man over there, and when they're in the area, they'll actually pick up the bags at the end of my driveway. And I try not to abuse that and put my household trash in there just what I get out of the bar ditch. But he's been really super. Oh, I, I got an email on the same thing that I told you I was going to share with you that I just didn't. And it says, it just says, uh, most of the honorable judge call, in the earlier email I mentioned the possibility of a grant from P PXP and a point of contact. Uh, I also mentioned that the prior PXP contact I had spoken to a Conoco Phillips manager. We met with him a few days ago, and he talked about bringing up grants. And he'd see, he says he's talked to me before, and I'm sure I have, but it's probably not about trash. Um, anyway, I asked again with the possibility of Conoco Phillips establishing community relations through grants. He said it was doable. I asked him for permission to share his cell phone number with you, and he gave me the go ahead. This is his name and cell phone. I honestly believe that something positive could come out of this. Should you be too busy to follow up, perhaps one of the commissioners could have to help out. After all, they did a really hard campaigning to get elected. Good luck as always. Thanks for all you do. Make it a great day. And so, I don't know if somebody has time to sit down and call these people, or if I could get somebody to sit down and call these people and see if they could help, or see if, they, if they're interested. How the phone numbers if I could get one of y'all to do it? I had called that one guy that you gave me a phone number I called the cell in his office he never never returned my call. You want to try these for me? I'm getting ready to go into six days of jury trial. You, get, you give me some numbers, I'll, I'll get your call. That's email in right your right package. Here. Highlight that phone number. So you'll think about it and get back to me next question for Well, and what, what we need to do, Ms. Sparks, is start contacting some of these people, but we're going to end up having to have somebody come clean our roads. TxDOT has, what, that thing that they drive through, that breaker? Mm -hmm. You know, and they pick up the paper. But unfortunately, on our county roads, we can't rake up those refrigerators in a lot of places. Mattresses, refrigerators, you name it. I mean, it's bags of yeah, trash. It's almost like you need a huge vacuum cleaner because uh -huh. it's, it's just overwhelming. I mean, but if we keep letting it go, it's going to keep piling up. And I know you said <coughs> if you pick it up, it comes back. But God, it's going to get gross out there after a while. Well, Somebody got, actually called and told me it stinks at their house. So much trash has been thrown in their bar dish that there's flies everywhere and it stinks. I got tired of doing it on foot a quarter of a mile from the end of my property, so I brought me a trail wagon this year, well, last year, so I can... What do you think? I don't know. We're all citizens. Maybe if we uh, make a, like a citizen's day, like they make a, like a neighborhood watch or something, everybody joins in, and somebody gets... I know it's not everybody can afford a video camera or whatever, something, but if you can videotape some of these guys, then... I say we need to bust these SOBs. Once yes. we bust them, we bust them. Picking up behind them, we're catering to them. And then when we stick it to them. That's when they're going to learn, and other people will know that we mean business. Mm -hmm. And I mean, stick it to them hard. Yeah, yeah. It'll what send is, a message. What is the criteria? Well, yes. If you have it on camera and show them on camera, can you? Do you have to have a personal witness to give them a yes. sign or what? Well, yes, we sure. show you that. If you, everybody got these iPhones and stuff. Everybody's videoing everything, putting on Facebook, doing all this stuff. If you can video and maybe maybe not get the person inside the truck throwing the trash, but at least they'll get us a truck, at least we got somewhere to start from. And that's kind of what we're looking at right now. It's going to have to be a lot of citizens to get involved in this. I mean, even though I'm getting six more deputies, we're trying. It's still, it's still going to have to have, i got to need more ears and eyes out. I've got... Suspicious vehicles, people pulling up these houses and breaking in and all this kind of stuff. People aren't getting involved. I mean, you know, you can't put it on y'all, can't put it on me. I mean, the citizens of Corns County is going to have to stand up and video it. Cameras, cameras are everywhere. Whatever you think, deem, but when you do this, you got to remember one thing. You're a witness. You just can't pass it off to us. You're a witness. I'm going to get a statement from you. That's where my deputy comes in. Hey, Bob, what about those deem cameras? Oh, they could be used, but they're not as good as the one or two that will disappear. Oh, yeah. They're good for burglaries and stalking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the are good for burglaries and stalking. Out there on the road by itself, it's not going to last. No, time. it's not going to work. Maybe we could call a special meeting and five of us sit down and talk about it until we come up with something. Don't like, we don't leave the room until we come up with a game plan. I mean, it might only take an hour or two. What do you think about that? What would it cost to pick up all the trash that people? Oh, oh, I know, yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Say, say, this is together, or we can do something. It's not going to be cheap. That comes through my office, and uh, I have had people bring in uh, the 
pick a paper out that uh, they're like a tax return or whatever an envelope got in, uh, a name and address on it. We can't use that. And I use it, but only limited because you still got to have uh, witness to. Well, I had a situation on a county road where uh, Jeffrey remembered it quite well. We went out there and we got, we found a pay stub. So the deputy called him and he said, "Oh no!" They said, "No, the, this is your stuff." And he said, "Oh." <laughs> And he came, he came and picked it up. He, did it. he said he went around the corner so fast that it must have fallen out the back of his truck. He had to tell me. Yeah. Well, but he could have. Well, it he did come pick it up. Well, there's not. Thanks for your deputies there, ain't? So you'll let me know when you come to a solution, or I'll check back with you. Yeah, I think we need to, like Carl said, I think that's when we need to all get together and hammer it out. The sheriff was right. This is going to take everybody. We yeah, need I help. Agree. And you I know, agree. when we get out to some of these places, there's actually dead critters in bags. There's stuff. I mean, I know. And it's it's pitiful. I found them in my garbage. Sure, if you haven't been down our county roads, get your four by four. Several years ago, the county had community dumpsters and people threw dead out of stuff and stopped. That's been 20 years ago, so maybe a solution. Well, somebody must have had this cat in their freezer, but this summer I came upon an HEB sack and it had a stiff as a board dead cat in it. <laughs> now you know that it's not going to stay that way very long. But, but in the uh, summer. Ms. Sparks, before you leave, will you talk to Sylvia and leave your phone number again? And when we have that planning meeting, I'll call you or something. Okay. Excuse me. Okay. That would be okay. like the only item on the agenda. We'll we never get so lucky to have one item on the agenda. <laughs> Don't even do it. <laughs> but we can, we can work on it. dated November 18th. And um, it's really short by Lewis. Oh, actually, it says, a notice perceived was issued on November 18th, 2011. And then in the month of December, the general contract started coordination. And it shows you every day what happened on January 3rd, January 4th, up into de demolition. And I'm going to give uh, mine to Carol so we can make it. A, she can attach it to minutes if anybody wants to look at it. Uh, it also has a Texas Historic Courthouse Preservation Program site visit report included. Kind of like notes, kind of like minutes of everything that was done. Uh, the applications for payments. That's what we just did in uh, Luana still. That's those payments. So. I heard me talking. You weren't asking that. I'll um, give this one to Carol, and she can have it. And all it is is the update of what happened on the meetings. It says who the personnel is, who the communication is, and what the schedule that it looks like for the schedule to come down. I can actually read this if anybody wants me to read it, or you can view it if you'd like to view it. Does anybody want to hear it? No. Okay. Well, I'm going to hand this to Carol, and she can follow it with her minutes just for the update if anybody wants to see it. Well, does anybody have any questions to ask me? I mean, I gave you everything. You have to, there's nothing more that I can do that. No, 
number 17 is to discuss approved, disapproved, paying a second claim in the amount of $21,769.14 for delayed start date of November 18, 2011. MJ Boyle, that's in there. He sent me a claim. This is that, the change order that he sent us last time was $25,000 something dollars. And if you look, now he sent a claim. The it's the exact I same. I, I don't see why. It's like where he said it's 25 and then 21. There's a big change there. We got a discount. Huh? We got a discount. I, yeah. <laughs> I understand it, but I'm, I mean, I still stick to my guns. I'm not going to. Is that a motion? What? Is that a motion or a discussion? Well, I'm discussing. I mean, I'll let everyone else talk. I'm just kind of, you know, discussing it. But if I have to make the motion, I'll make it. But, you know, I'm sure everybody else wants to. Well, I'm, I'm still. You can discuss I'm still, it after the motion is made, too. Go ahead, go, go ahead, James. I'm then sorry. I'll make the motion to disapprove paying a second claim in the amount of $21,769.14 for a delayed start date of November 18, 2011, because they did have a chance. They had a chance to redo the contract. They chose not to. Why should we pay for it? I agree. I'll second the motion. Okay, I agree with you. I think if they were going to ask they for the money, they should have it. I mean, we have a contract that's in place. Let's use the contract that's in I place. I stick to my contract. So. Does anybody have anything else? There's been well, a motion and a second. I'll add to here that this Mason restoration and clearing, 5865 that's just bogus. That's, uh, that's in the original contract. There's no addition to these bricks. No one putting the bricks around there. And I don't see why that We're at number, what number two? Well, in this. Oh, just on this back page, we read the plan. I thought you had something extra in there. Yes, no, I read that. That makes charge is ridiculous. And it's the same thing as copper. There's a $1,900 charge more for copper because copper went up or something. If it would have gone down, would we, would we have gotten a discount? Probably not. There's been a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any, aye. any opposed? Opposed. Call opposes. Okay, 4 4 1 against. Motion carries. Uh, uh, to, no, no, no. To dis motion carries to disapprove paying a second claim. Could you follow me, Carol? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, number 15, discuss, approve, disapprove hiring Chester Drash as a geotechnical engineer for basement demolition and preparation of the basement infill process for an approximate fee of $4,525 with the final amount being based on the amount of time that it takes to install the fill material. Lewis Fisher recommends that the fees for the service be paid through the architectural contract and an additional service with no markup fee. You can find that in the, there's an email from Lewis Fisher to me, it's dated, um, actually has Sylvia's name on top, we're coming from her computer. Uh, do y'all see that one where it says copy for commissioners on top? Can y'all pull that one down? You got it? It's dated February 7th, and this is what it says. It says, Dear Judge Shaw, under, uh, never mind, that's not important. Geotechnical engineering recommendation. The structural engineer's drawing related to the work of this phase calls for the following. A geotechnical engineer should, should be hired to represent the owner during basement demolition and preparation of the basement infill process. The requirement that this engineer represents the owner is also the information provided to the contractor represents a professional opinion based on sound engineering advice and is independent from what the contractor might suggest. We need the geotechnical engineer to provide us with two pieces of information. First, we need for the engineer to tell us the spacing of holes that must be cut in the old basement floor so that the basement does not trap water over time. For cost savings and structural stability reasons, not all of the old basement is to be removed. Secondly, we need a recommendation for the type of fill material to be placed in the remaining basement. The geotechnical engineer will also monitor the placement of the fill to see that it is done correctly. I have spoken about this issue with our structural engineer and he reiterated that he does uh, recommend that the geotechnical engineer be hired to provide this information. He has requested and received a proposal from Chester Drash, a highly regarded geotechnical engineer. The proposed fee is approximately $4,525, with the final amount being based on the amount of time that it takes to install the fill material. I request that you ask the commissioner's court to approve the payment of this fee. I recommend that the funds for this service be paid through the architectural contract as an additional service we will not charge a market for these services if it goes through our office. Since the demol demolition has proceeded to the point where we need this enge engineering information in a few days, I ask that you consider approval as soon as possible so there is no delay. Please call me if you have any questions. Is this the same engineer that uh, 
a Mayfield County tear off the wings because they were keyed together and was written was tearing the court out there. Is that the same engineer? Oh, I don't. Uh, you know what? This says my name on the agenda. It sort of said Louis Fisher. Because I just so did it's it. It's the same engineer. Uh, you may want to consider that he did a too good a job on telling us about the machine. He said, oh, it's tearing the court out there. Mommy, it looks like you ought to have that information on me. So, we ought to be asking you. Do you guys you know? Do you guys know anything about who says your dash is? Or, I mean, like I said, I got this from Lewis and I put it on there at his request. Well, I'll make this comment. Looking at the plans, two, 2007 for phase one, it said remove the basement in its entirety. It had eight feet, eight feet in parentheses. And then now they're only going to knock off two feet of the top of it and fill it with base. Well, they knew when they changed that that they had a hole drilled in the bottom of that to get the water out. And they could take that back hole that's over there and just bust that up and then crack and it all fall out. They don't have to hire an engineer to tell them how many holes to put in there. So that's not a big deal. Of course, they want to test the base, and $4,500 sounds like a pretty high price to pay an engineer to tell us how many holes to put in there and what kind of base to put in. And that's not their final price. That's, what that's not their final price, the $4,500. You know, I don't know. I know James probably remembers the discussion about the county doing the dirt work for the new annex. And what we came up with is that if we were to have some structural problems with the new annex, we didn't want them to be able to point it to the dirt work that we did that they put the concrete on top of. You know, I mean, GAC is clearly paying two thirds of the cost, but y'all are denying or not denying the payment. So I mean, they have they're paying 66 percent of the cost. It looks like y'all have 100 percent of the pay. And I, if that's fair, this court thinks that's fair. I guess that's fair. But you know, all you got to do is is when this thing is finished, if some problem arises, and they say, well, Mr. Yar, Mr. Sh Shindle, Mr. Rosales, Ms. Shaw, do you remember you didn't want to hire an engineer to test this? And it's CYA, maybe, maybe not. I mean, I don't know, whatever you all think. Well, but they were, sorry, they were supposed to, on the original plan, they were supposed to move, remove eight feet, but they're only going to remove two feet. And, and I don't know where that's changed in these plans. But there's some plans in there that just got this week and I didn't look at them. Right, who gave them the authorization to? You know, Remove only two feet rather than eight feet if it was in the original plan. Plus, if they, I don't, re I don't remember. Do you, Carl? I honestly here don't. I don't remember if we gave them that or if they just took it upon themselves. Because removing two feet to eight feet, I mean, they save a lot of money. They need to do that with a change order, and you should also get some savings out of it. Right, and I, right. I don't remember that. You're not going to remove six feet of concrete. What, I mean, that's a lot of savings. Yeah, that should be. Who, who gave them that authority? Who told them it was okay? Has to be the commission. And those are, isn't that a result why they need that engineer? I mean, I right, if that's a result from what, why they need the engineer, then why should we pay for the engineer? They made their own decision. I'm not saying, I can't just can't remember, but if they made their own decision to remove from eight to two, now they need an engineer. I don't know, how could that be our responsibility? You still need a change order. Right, I understand. But I, like I said, I don't remember, that's how I'm asking you, man. I don't remember. I honestly don't, if we gave them that authority. Did you approve it? I don't, I don't know, Bob, you're the county attorney, you know? You've been here a lot longer than I have. Let's, let's, let's stay with this. I just, I want to, I didn't know if he knew because I don't remember. Maybe we didn't. I wasn't here. Right, you weren't here. <laughs> <laughs> <Get out. laughs> but, you know, if we did, then, I mean, if we did give him that, then I guess maybe we can look at it again. Okay, I, I just want this court to remember this one thing, that everything you're doing to that courthouse and that project mm -hmm. and those engineers and that architect, everything you're saying, when you go to build this jail, what goes around comes around, and I just hope there's no underside or oversight made there. One has nothing to do with the other. Well, Carl, I, I want to know you. when is this going to stop? Forty two hundred dollars. They're looking for a three thousand uh, dollars next week. The A's on right now, so I mean, you'd be the man for the job. I mean, I, that's not on here, and we're advertising for that. But let's stay with this number fifteen. It's not about Pete. It's not these five people up here need to figure it out. It was decided before we came in here, so y'all just go ahead and make a motion. Yeah. 
before it was decided. Come on, somebody make a motion. Or we can't take all day on this one item. I mean, my question was, uh, we can make a motion, yay or nay or whatever we make, and no action or whatever, but <clears throat> I would like to know about the two to eight. The eight plus two to eight. That's critical. Right. I mean, who's going to, I mean, I don't have the answer. Where are we going to get the answer from? Well, I, what I'm wondering is how this got put on the agenda like 17 and Mr. Boyle's not here. <coughs> Because, oh, they sent that to me. They sent it to me, too, to put on the agenda. And if they sent it to me to put on the agenda... Well, really, I, I talked to him this morning, he didn't know that he was on the agenda. He sent it to me and asked me to put it on the agenda, and I called him back and really? left him a message. So do you listen? Yeah. Did he but say he, he was coming, or...? No. I left him a message that it would be on the agenda. He sent me the deal and asked that it be on the agenda. I can't approve a claim or a bill by myself. Everybody knows that goes to the court. That's common sense. Well, you didn't ask if Mr. Boyle was here. Usually you go, uh, Mr. Boyle? I didn't ask if Mr. Fisher was here either. Carl, when they send me this stuff, I'm going to put it on the agenda. Okay. okay. I mean, well, I, I can't. He didn't know he was on the agenda. That's what he said. 2 though. 3 12, he submitted this. Do you think I'm just going to sit on it? You guys are the court. This is yeah, the decision. Yeah, but was it a request to be on the agenda? It has to be on the agenda. It's a claim. Okay, we can't but did, make it he, ourselves. did he? Ask I let you to him be know that it was on the agenda. It has to be. Okay. Legally, okay. it has to be. But I, he knows. He knows it's on the agenda. So he, he sent it to you. Don't, you don't make your own decision by he yourself. So you put it on the agenda. No, and I called. And you called, called him about it. You let him he know that he was on it. Sending it. Yes. And I told him it'd be on the agenda. Today, and he knew about I left him a message. Yes. Sylvia and I called him. Called him from the front phone. I agree with you, Carl. We don't want the liability to be on us. We want to know why. We want to know why it's not included in the plans. Well, I don't know if y'all knew this, but I'm not an engineer. And I'm not an architect, and I'm not a doctor. But you do have to approve the bill. I don't say we guess. Architects and engineers and doctors. You told me in no uncertain terms that I'm not either, so I'm not. Unanimously. <laughs> All right, so what are we doing here? Well, you might want to just take no action until they figure out why they're going to change this thing up to two to eight. Or yeah, to make eight. sure that they're here so they can state their plan. You know what, Carl? These these agendas and these packages are prepared 72 hours in advance, and you could pick one up if you don't think that I'm calling these people, and you could call I them. didn't say that, Judge. I just but said you did not know. Man. They know. They know they're on this agenda, and these packages are ready. Your packages sit right here for 72 hours. You know, I left him a message. It's not my job to decide whether he's coming. I'm the county judge. I don't oversee MJ Boyle or Lewis Fisher. But I will give them ample opportunity, or anybody in this county that wants to be on this agenda, ample opportunity. It's prepared 72 hours advance. It's posted in the annex. Your package is sitting right here. I have this stuff ready for y'all. And if there's anybody that thinks that there's not any transparency in this, come look at it. It can't be more visible than exactly what it says. It has their names on it. It can't be any more visible than that. Take no action on it and go on. Mr. Yeah, you want to take no action so you can review the no plans action. and stuff? No action. So we get more information? Those plans are right out there. If anybody wants to go see them, it's a big roll. Here, but they've not been approved by this body. They're not affected. Sir, I wasn't here, but I know that this is posted and everybody can look at it. It's on the internet. You can print it out. You can see it any way you want to get it. And, hold on a second. Let's go back to number 10 before we get to uh, the reports. Uh, number 10 is to discuss, approve, disapprove traffic control di devices specifically. 80 and State Highway 123 outside the city limits in Corn City and other locations needed is determined by the sheriff. Sheriff. Uh, been brought to my attention by Decision Tree of Corn County that there's a lot of these truck traffic in Corn County. There's a lot of it. <laughs> and they're parking in a lot of different places, which is not on public. We can't get them from trespassing or tearing up somebody's personal, but they're blocking driveways and stuff going into residences at 80 and 123. Uh, it brought my attention. I went to Bob and Rodney Chester. Uh, we went out there and, and uh, looked at this stuff. Rodney can put up no parking signs. And if this is passed here today, 
as an ordinance, I can enforce it. And that's why we're bringing this to you. And it's in your packet, and this is on every traffic device. Stop signs, red light. Every time we have to do this, I thought we could do a blanket. I would just call, you know, text dot, and I can enforce it. No, it has to be approved for every intersection, every road, every bar ditch, everything. And Orange County has to be approved by commissioner's court for us to enforce it. And we have to write an ordinance. And we have to write an ordinance. So this is what this is our first step. Nobody's never done this before, but we're getting there. And it's always Who's behind the, the we're behind the curve. Bob, that's your job. Yeah, that's Bob's job. Bob's job. And we ask Bob. It's his job. Bob, that's we says we have to ask him. Bob, is this your job? <laughs> it has to be writing. We know that. So we're Sir. just going to ask. Him. And then we're I gonna, get paid extra. We're going to ask you to be informal today. Okay. Will you write this for us? Yes, sir. <laughs> Please. Can we get it out by next week? But but on a serious note, this is a uh, this traffic is getting tough, and there's, these trucks are parking on the roadways and they're blocking in people. They're uh, making a hazard. Uh, people are trying to take it in like people are doing speed bumps on the county roads. People are putting in logs so they won't be parking there. There's all kinds of stuff going on right now. So, can we put in there that it can't use them engine brakes also? Oh, going into all the cities? Thank you. Well, well, just Jeff, what city. is it? Yeah, I mean, city uh, Pope, Pope has that. that. Pope has that big flat out of uh, engine brakes that has to be one. Yes, uh, I understand what he's talking about. I, I was just wondering if you're, you're going to be doing that. Did you, I know that they're fixing to do something at 123 and 181, but it's going to be a terrible, terrible right there when they, there are people around that are coming off of 123, getting under the shoulder, acting like they're going to go on 181. And turning around. And there's sometimes as many as 10 uh, vehicles in that middle median. You know, Corn City is around that property, and huh? that's the city of Corn City. Corn City has annexed that property with the Corn City Police Department sitting in there. But not the street. Where's that down? You'll see them sitting in the median. But maybe, you know, I, I've seen a, a, a police officer at times, but maybe they do a sign, no U turn, or I mean, I don't know, but. It's because those trucks I are coming up the hill, them. both directions. Well, they know and I've been sitting out there in my Polaris, and when they drive by, I've been given a, when they turn to my You're not driveway. I'm trying to control my property. I mean, it, it's going to be a bad accident. But you know, but, but also, <laughs> please please do know that uh, I'm not sure, Miss Moy, but it is coming up, and uh, Sheriff knows Pete's going for me. I will not be here the morning of the 16th, and there is going to be a meeting out at TxDOT to go ahead and start. 181 and 123, right. and then that's when our way station is going to start. Right. And if we can get cops to start congregating there, people are going to put doing silly stuff to cost other people their lives. Okay. So, as our hope, as our dream, as our goal. Thank you. Right. Well, the, the other part of this thing on the agenda is set in there so that the sheriff could go out and take a look and submit exactly. a list of what's there, and then I'll probably. You, you can the see ordinances and just submit the ordinances and everything all together. I don't have. But I'll do this other one wherever you pass it. I don't have a public record. each individual one so everybody it's knows it's all public record. record. The they said we didn't know about it, kind of like the stop sign uh, mm -hmm. coming off of Rooming Hill and uh, 72. My word, when they put a stop sign there, a big stop sign. I mean, that's always been a yield sign forever. And now it's a big stop sign on that truck route. So, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, so you, you and me with Mr. Buston and are going to get that ordinance written and ready, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay, I make a motion to approve traffic control devices specifically at Texas Highway 80 and State Highway 123 outside city limits of Carn City and other locations needed as determined by sheriff. So I think the traffic and authorize the county attorney to write such ordinances. Ask, ask and ask it. And ask the county to within a reasonable amount but of time. But I think you need to add in there also, this <coughs> specifically, I think, the decision, well, not decision, but the suggestion was parking, no parking signs. No parking, no parking signs that in there, so we know. And no parking signs as well. No right. parking signs at that location. At that location of 80 and 120. Yes, sir. I second Carl's motion. James Arkin. You did? Pay attention, Great. Judge. Yeah, he, he <laughs> <laughs> uh, these, all, all in favor, say aye. Hand uh, <laughs> all in favor, say aye. Thank y'all. We're, we're going to have more of these, so. Any opposed? <coughs> no opposition. Motion carries 5-0. Um, 
Hey, Miss Frankie, while you're here, let's just finish the second page. Okay, sounds good. This is a tax collection of Horn County ending the month of January. Total taxes collected here today, $3,797,189.41. Leaving the balance of the current row, $432,798.67, a percentage of collection, 89.7683. Delinquent taxes year to date collected $23,264.55. A balance of the delinquent row $164,980.39. Road and Bridge Special Collection year to date $525,522.51. The balance of the current row $58,476.87. The percentage of collection 89.9868. The delinquent year to date collection $2,020.81. The balance of the delinquent road $12,674.81. Real Fire Emergency District year to date collection $301,474.90. A balance of the current row $34,046.04. The year-to-date collection delinquent, $1,287.50. The balance of the delinquent row, $5,675.76. Thank you, Mrs. Franklin. Uh, did uh, you vote on number 15, or was that just no action? No action. No action. Number 19, that's you, boy. We'll just skip that thing. Well, you know what? I just want to finish this page. Oh, okay. <laughs> I should have stayed with Judge Sylvia yesterday. I learned how to have one bitch. I think Lawana covered most of the high points already with her report. No, just the only thing is, um, I was gone last week. My son went back to Virginia over the weekend, so I was spending some time with him. Got a notice of our December sales tax, $566,394,000. Our November sales tax was $332,532. So, Good. I don't know if somebody got a really big Christmas present <laughs> in sure. December. Sheriff sure. sure got it all. Sheriff sure got it all. That's right. That was, yeah, it's a big difference. Because we've been running about $330,000, 350000 In December, it went to five sixty six. So A lot of people do in the end of the year. Yeah. So. Other than that, no. Well, I make a motion that we approve the treasury report as presented. I'll second it. You'll get those signed ones to Carol then. Yes, ma'am. We're going to pass it down and we'll pass it by before she leaves. Hey, bye. We yes, have something here from you that you've been looking for. Make sure you pick up the you need that falls. It's here. Oh, no. She sent it to me. I got it. Oh, okay. Go on. Thank you, though. Uh, report of fees, fines, money collected by the following departments. <coughs> we'll start with you, Carol. I know you left something up here. He did. Here it is. It says um, your grand total is $79,1338 with your less check dispersed $12,138.85 for a total of $66,874.53. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. All righty. That's Carol. Bob, yours is up here. Hot checks year to date. Well, it's two years, so we start this January. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. I was like, wait a second, all the numbers are the same, but it's 41. Yes, January for restitution, Ms. Crabtree collected 40. $4,142.93. In court costs, we collected $1,343.30. So we uh, collected a total of $5,486.23. And compared with $131.11, she had collected $3,639.80. And 
And I know the merchants appreciate Ms. Crabtree, so thank you to her. One of the things that has helped us is uh, I have arranged with uh, Tito Magari to be uh, my warrant person. And Tito will bring you in. <laughs> if, you do, if you want to write a hot check, Tito will come get you. <laughs> come get you. Knock at your door. Yes, he shows up with you in tow to make a payment. So we appreciate Tito and so do the merchants. Um, <laughs> All you got to do, he thoroughly enjoys it. I can't understand that. Come on in. Um, did, okay, did, did Robbie send a report with anybody? I've got one here. Um, on her civil fees for January, she collected $8,877, and on her criminal fees, $4,890. Will you, uh, can we get Carol a copy of that just to attach? Okay. Can you hand these to Carol? This is Bob's and Carol. And did we have any from the Justice of the Peace? No Justice of the Peace reports? Yes, they're very busy. Very busy. Um, if those reports help us when it comes time to budget time yes. and everybody's saying that they need help, that's, you can always go back to those and look. Um, juvenile department, I don't think Neva gave me one. I know we're doing board meetings right now. We're doing it Thursday, so I'll probably have that Thursday. Just because we're catching up and we rewrote the, the, the JJAP manual. I redid some, excuse me, we did not rewrite it. We amended some things in the JJAP manual. And what about Sharon? I did submit my report by the need determination Is it in this pile up here? Here it is. Determination development permit for January 2012. We received 18 uh, for a total of 450. On site sewage facility permits for January for nine, totaling 4,050. Uh, the inspector's portion is 1560 TCEQ's portion of that is $90, and the county portion is $2,400. I have not completed the rest of my report. I, I typed that in the bottom. I will submit it. There's I nine. think you explained that earlier. And uh, the one other reminder is that on Friday, this Friday, in the new annex, there is a, help me out here, uh, illegal dumping meeting. <laughs> Uh, from John, and I forget his last name, I submitted it with all the checks to everybody, inviting everybody. Again, this time there is a fee of 20. In the past, it had been free uh, when he helped and hosted his meetings in Wilson County. This one is $20. Uh, you can come, and he does give great advice and the process of illegal dumping and how to go about cleaning it up. This, I went, I went to the one last year in uh, GoLed, and that's why I said this, this doctor is very good. A lot of the commissioners went. I mean, I've seen several commissioners from DeWitt County, but uh, the judge from Goldhead County was there, plus the sheriff. And a lot of my deputies went. And uh, very informative. A lot of code and compliance people, you know, showed up from all different parts of this area of Wilson. And I know I've seen Jimmy Stewart up there. So it's a very informative school. It's about an eight hour school. I mean, it's, it's an all day school, and it's very informative on what uh, can and cannot do. Uh, it's, it's an eye opener. And also they bring in other people from all over the uh, A&M and stuff like this to give talks and give uh, anything about water and everything else. So it's a good, it's a good school. Very informative. And I, I wish the commissioner, if you can, go to it. That's just judge, Friday? Just Friday. It's very informative. It uh, gives you a heads up on a lot of stuff, especially in this all-field Nine to four. It was in your chat, and I, I said it in the last it's meeting. It's uh, illegal dumping. It's how it's stated. On the, I heard on the radio this morning, but and, and you get credit for it. You know, like y'all measured up, y'all need some hours or something like that. Y'all get about eight hours credit. So, uh, we'll keep close for law enforcement and also for y'all. Good for school. Are you going? Yes. <laughs> you want to take a picture of that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We need to post it. Hmm? We need to post it. You can. We can. No, I'm saying, do you want to post something on the door just saying there's going to be a meeting? Is that what you're asking? Well, no, no but I mean, Pete's going to be there. I'm going to be there. You're going to be there. I'm not going to be there. I have another meeting. No, well, we don't sit together and make decisions. We but can we can go to the end of the same. That's okay with the county attorney. I've already, I've already, I was already scheduled for two other meetings. I'll tell you after it's over. <laughs> 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 another removal, right? Let me 
going to keep Bob busy. Okay. Yeah, we'll get the word. Busy, Bob. Okay, let's go. Uh, number nine, discuss approved, disapproved, forming and planning a committee to review jail proposals submitted January 31st, 2012 to the Carnes County Jail. The proposed committee to include Sheriff County Judge Commissioner Yellow. The proposed committee has been active in working with the Texas Commission on Jail Standards, Alberto Martinez, and the USB grant representatives in regard to the jail project, and that's Sheriff. Uh, as y'all know, y'all was here the other day and we had uh, all the different architects come in and uh, give us their, their spiel about how they can do this, make it better, cheaper, uh, whatever. That's, and that's kind of where we're at right now. They, a lot of them went down to the potential jail site down here. And, and uh, this committee, like I said, we've been involved with the jail commission a lot. The people I've got on, on this committee wishing that they can help me because I know a lot of them went out on their own and, and done a lot of research on this stuff. Uh, and like I said, they're familiar faces. When I, I talk to the jail commission, what we're doing, they know them because they've been for the jail commission. And all the jail commission know Commissioner Yarr, the judge, and Bob. So uh, they know we're going in the right direction, and this is what it is. Uh, like I said, that presentation the other day was an eye-opener for me. I've talked to people. I've been in a lot of them jails before, putting people in, not in them, but putting <laughs> people in them jails. Uh, and uh, some of them have been here a long time, some of them on the new and cutting edge, and some of the stuff I've seen in this presentation is, uh, isn't, here we go again, an hour, you know, on the computer graphics and stuff like that. It's, it's interesting, and I need somebody that we can kind of get together real quick and look at some things, and uh, I hope to get this thing off the ground in the very near future. But what we have to... We have a lot of baby steps in here. Yeah. After we get a proposal to get, I mean, after we review the proposals, nobody's any, nobody's talked about money, financing, how this is going to go about, any of this stuff. And that, that's all going to come about. There's got to be some public hearings. There's got to be right. some stuff that to allow to go about this in the right way. And we got to put it, you know, in the paper. I mean, get uh, like I said, public meetings and get a lot of input. Here we got a lot of input all the time, but we're going to get more. You know. <laughs> and, and there's there's nothing mandatory to have a public hearing, but we need to have public. The sheriff wants to have public hearings. I want to have public hearings. So we can oh, this is a big investment. This, this is, is a, a big investment, and it's yeah. Barnes County's investment. And this so going to be for a long time. Hearing. We should have done this 10, 15 years ago. Never got there. We're always trying to get there. And like I said, I like to get this thing up and running quickly, because right now I'm sitting on, I think, 36, 37 people in jail, 33 beds over at GEO. Hello. I've got a few people over the other day. I think I had 9 or 10 in this GEO. So over the weekend. Uh, you got to play some evening meetings. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Public uh, hearings will be. And in the evening. The sheriff and I have talked about that. And the sooner we get started, the cheaper it's going to be because every day something goes away. Bingo. Yeah, That's everything the goes asleep. You're right about that. So anyway, um, the, 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 uh, <laughs> it being a county project, I mean, if anybody else has any input or anything else that they'd want to put on there. Well, uh, you know, I'll just throw it out there that we have four precincts and we have four commissioners. And maybe you ought to think about having a person from each precinct. Kind of like we did the furniture. If, if we start if we start with something like well, that, like later down the line, no, no, that's fine. But this is just the proposals so we can start okay. talking to somebody for somebody to come bring in and like those drawings that they showed you. We want somebody to start bringing in drawings, bringing in plans, and let the county know this is just the proposals. And then y'all This is just those books to, to sit and read those books. Right. And then we'll bring you the one that that we find. And then from there is when we start asking for <coughs> RFPs for money. And then we start that planning phase that you're talking about. This is just to read those books and to figure out just the books, to look at those engineering books and just that's it. It's not going any further than that. This is the proposal review only. I'm fine with it. I'll make the motion to approve. <coughs> Appointing the committee to review jail proposal submitted January 31st, 2012 for the Carnes County Jail. Proposed committee to include Sheriff, County Judge, and Commissioner Yower. Proposed committee has been active in working Texas Commission on Jail Standards, Humberto Martinez, and U.S. Uh, DA grant representatives in regards to the jail project. I second All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you all again. I'll say, aye. Sheriff, aye. Sure. Carries. one more question. Go ahead. How long before we decide on those seven architects we listen to? That was, that's what we just decided. We're going to read those. Y'all going to do it? Yes. Okay. Y'all going to pick the architect? Yes, and we'll bring you back exactly what we 
read through those books. And I'm, I welcome any of you, Commissioner, to give me your ideas of what you thought of the people who presented May presentation. Right. Call him. Don't call both of us. <laughs> Just call one. Y'all call Pete. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll talk with Pete. Okay. <coughs> and I'm not saying, I mean, I'd love to talk to y'all, but not the quorum way. So y'all talk to Pete if there's anything that needs to be said. Get approved. Ten. Yes. It did, it did. Yes. Right, Carol? Yes, it did. Okay. So, um, motion carries 5 0 on number 9. No opposition. Thank you. Number 8 is the acknowledgement on record that the San Antonio Food Bank will be at Runge BFW Post 9181 East Saranza Street, Runge, Texas on February 27th. That's a, that's a uh, Monday. Did I not put that in here? It's a Monday, though. The distribution time is early. We usually start in the 10:30, 11 area. They have not sent me a firm uh, email or voucher. They haven't even sent the voucher yet. But it will be on the 27th in Rungi at the VFW, and it will be drive-through like it should be. It will be drive-through. It's not going to be carts and we're going to be driving through and handing stuff out. Volunteers are welcome. We'd love to have anybody that's going to show up. But we'll be there in the VFW parking lot, and I will get the time out to the paper and the radio as soon as I have a distribution time. I have one question, uh, Bart, Judge Shaw. Yes, sir. Uh, when they pick up the vouchers, do they come back with you with the number of vouchers that they received? Because then we know whether everybody used their vouchers or whether there was some that was lost. There's an accountability, Mr. Widerski, that's set up in there. I know, unfortunately, we had some incidents last time. I wasn't able to be here. I should have... Uh, uh, what happened is they sent down a whole new crew on the day I wasn't available to be here, which was not the smartest thing in the world on, you know, they knew I wasn't going to be here and I wasn't expecting a new crew, and I was gone when I started getting those phone calls. So I understand that there are some issues. We're going to call through those this time. I'll be back out there that Monday. I'm usually with that truck when it comes in, except unless something very drastic happens, unless it's an emergency, and that's happened to me a couple of times. But usually we have it set up to where it should just mo smooth, like, Fall City where it just walked through because we'd already set the precedence of how to do that. Well, then, unfortunately, when the same people did not show up this last time, that the didn't happen. The same food bank people, you mean? Oh. Uh, so it, it, usually it's the same ones, like in Kennedy and Fall City. Guy we had the food? exact same crew, right, and it was very smooth. Uh -huh. It was just a, unfortunately, I can't say that the third time. So I understand what you're saying, Mr. Wendorski, and yes, we're going to hammer that out. Well, so please, my volunteers, wondering. don't leave me. Don't leave me for one bad, one bad incident. Yeah. No, what I was wondering is uh, because they run out of vouchers and there's a lot of people that are standing in line and the people that I issued, I mean, I gave out vouchers and I don't, I didn't see the people show up with those vouchers. So right. were those vouchers lost is what I was wondering. And I reprinted some. Uh, and when we got those vouchers out there, we're gonna we're gonna work on making that as smooth as po I promise. We're gonna do some damage control and make that as smooth as possible. Okay. And I, but I see I see what you're saying. That there's no. Yeah, because they actually they started out giving lots of food, and by the time it ended, people were getting very little. And we had one woman that really really complained a lot. And see, we never had that problem before. That was never an issue at the two previous. Fall City and Kennedy went smooth, smooth, smooth. And the I truck was a lot the same. Everybody got the same. Yes, we 300 it, vouchers. And you'd have they sent me down bags. a different staff while I was gone. And it wasn't the staff that I'm usually working with. So. Yeah, he only came with one person. It was, it was, it was not Jose and Louie With the truck. And it was a smaller truck. They anyway, we're working problem. on that. I promise. I promise I'll be there. So well, I, I say I promise, Wes, unless I something talked, happens. I talked to the driver afterwards and told him that, that we'd work all right smooth before, and he said, well, I can do that. I said, you told us you couldn't. He said, well, I can do it. And so apparently he told Mark that he will do the drive-through again. No, so, we will do the drive-through. Sure. That's how it will yeah, be done. Do it. We have an elderly population that cannot stand out there and do that. That's yeah. how we're going to do it. We're going to make it user-friendly to the citizens. But today no they had need. Fall City, it was freezing. It was cold that day. And we made it, though. Yeah. So, but we'll be in Rungi. We'll see y'all on Rungi if you need some food. Number seven is, uh, no, six. we have to do six first, and that's to read the minutes. And 
I've read the minutes. Does anybody else have any? Okay, let's go to number seven to review and or correct commissioner report minutes for the month of January and motion to accept after review and or corrections. And I read them. I don't, I don't remember seeing anything. Does anybody see anything? I'll make a motion. Make a motion to accept. Mm -hmm. I second that motion. All in favor say aye. 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 You're Excuse accepting me, number seven, correct? Yes, sir. Yes. All right. <coughs> number six. No, sir. <coughs> you can't accept the reading of the minute. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. And then number 31, no, number 23. <laughs> I know we've been here for forever. Number 23 is a, I make a motion that we adjourn. I'll second it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposition? Motion carries 5-0. Is everybody ready out the door? Thank you.